Hello everyone, I'm Naki Hamaguchi, working for Japanese non-life insurance company with Isumitomo Insurance. Recently, we have started to sell earthquake index insurance for commercial lines, so I'd like to introduce you what was the challenge in Japan to develop index insurance. So, what is index insurance? You might have known it well, but kindly let me introduce you briefly. Index insurance has simple payment steps. First, a loss event occurs. Second, a certain index which is causally related to the loss event meets predetermined conditions. Third, a predetermined claim amount is paid without any loss assessment. Compared to traditional indemnity insurance, index insurance is able to complete payments in much shorter time, transparent in terms of payments because of no necessity of loss assessment and repairs, and able to garner insurance capacity more easily along with its risk accumulation control. In terms of triggered, index insurance is similar to financial derivative, but index insurance is dealt as insurance. Therefore, index insurance can be handled by agencies who are not qualified to sell financial derivative. This is one of the biggest advantages because most of insurances in Japan are handled through agencies. However, there are few index insurances in Japan because of their difficulty to get approval from the regulatory authority. Next, I'd like to explain why we decided to develop weak index insurance. Japanese earthquake is catastrophic compared with the other NATCATs, so most of the EQ risk in homeowners insurance is transferred to the Japanese government to ensure the solvency. The outline of the scheme is as shown. On the other hand, the government provides no support for commercial lines, so insurance companies have to retain the risk or find the reinsurance company taking the risk. Insurance companies provide EQ coverage for property damage relatively broadly, but not for business interruption. This is because in indemnity insurance, EQ business interruption is a huge risk, takes a lot of time to assess a loss, and lacks reinsurance capacity. However, one questionnaire showed that SMEs need quick assets to restart their businesses just after affected by the past NATCAT. These facts make us decide to develop EQ index insurance. Let me explain briefly how EQ index insurance works. We use seismic intensity of the index. This is the unique seismic index in Japan and published for all earthquakes by Japan Meteorological Agency. Seismic intensity ranges 1 to 7 and EQ index insurance is triggered when seismic intensity hits 6 minus, 6 plus or 7. These are the image of each intensity. And in the specific case, the payment of EQ index insurance is as shown below. Actually, the payment differs according to the gross profit of the insured. Next, I would like to explain what is a challenge to develop index insurance in Japan. In the law for insurance business in Japan, non-life insurance is to compensate for damage caused by specific and accidental events. Therefore, we are required to prove to the authority that the determined payment rarely exceeds the actual loss. The authority shows three requirements for index insurance. First, eligible for non-life insurance. The index for payment trigger must have accidentalness. Second, indemnification. The probability of the payment exceeding the actual loss that is over indemnification must be low enough. Third, appropriateness of the index. There must be causal relation between the index and the loss occurrence, and the damage must be assessed by the index appropriately. Also, from the point of protecting policyholders, the index should be objective, transparent, and consistent. If these requirements are not met, index insurance may be dealt as a financial derivative. Especially, it is the most difficult to prove indemnification requirement, so I'd like to explain the detail about it. So, how can we prove indemnification requirement? As a quantitative approach, we have to specify the CPD of the damage ability and explain that the probability of predetermined payment exceeding the actual loss is very low. To specify the CPD, we could use historical loss. However, we need a lot of data to ensure the validity of the tail value of the distribution. If we cannot collect enough historical data, we could use a NATCAT model as another approach. In this case, we have to understand how the model works and explain that to the authority. 
For example, if it specifies the CPD as shown and the probability of over-indification should be within 10%, the payment within 15% of damageability meets the indemnification requirement. So how low should be the probability be? Actually, no clear threshold is determined. So in this case, we have to explain why 10% can be allowable. In the explanation, we should keep this in our mind. Indemnification requirement is equal to no profit principle for an insured, and this principle is derived from preventing gambling and moral hazard. We explain to the authority that with a certain threshold, EQ index insurance causes no gambling and no moral hazard. This was the most difficult point to get approval. So, as a bridge to tomorrow, let's challenge to develop next index insurance. This would be a heavy workload. Actually, we took two years to develop EQ index insurance, but it's quite beneficial for customers because of the quick payment. I expect that our approval case leads to the promotion of developing index insurance in Japan or the other countries with a big challenge on its approval. That's it. Thank you for watching.